Hi, Dr. Karens with week two's headlines and highlights for organization behavior. First, let's review our roadmap. We're making progress. Although it's week two, you'll have your first quiz for chapters one through five will be due no later than Sunday, 11.55 p.m. Also, a continuation of our discussion of Rango part two continues. And then the readings of the Christian Atheist, your reflections and practical faith applications. Remember, our overarching desire and goals to accomplish in this course is a desire for you to have a positive life-changing experience, whether that's personally, professionally, or spiritually. Whatever you need in your life, we're praying that God will amaze you and you will experience breakthrough. So let's take a little look at uh, the conversation you had about uh, human behavior and understanding it. Is it the single most important element? Many of you felt that it was. And so let's look a little bit about the complexities of our behavior as it's influenced obviously by our brain activity. Our frontal lobe is where we get our purposeful, thoughtful, conscious, emotional actions. Our occipital lobe is where we take in visually things that we see and what uh, stimulus uh, that causes. Our parietal lobe is the area of touch and our sensitivity, our ability to feel pain. Our temporal lobe is the languages, things we hear, how we hear them. Our cerebellum is what gives us balance and our brain stem connects to our spinal cord. So we are a complex individuals that God has created. Creating all of these elements uh, really influences our perceptions of things we observe and see and hear and do. So let's talk a little bit about how we're looking at faith as it relates to organization behavior. And I'm of the opinion that your theology affects your behavior. But I also recently came across something that actually has and makes a lot of sense. Con context is important for how we apply our values and what we believe. The pressures of life and situations that we encounter also influence our behavior. So I may believe certain things, but when I actually push comes to shove, do I actually do them? So that's why it's important for us to really challenge ourselves uh, to know exactly what do we really believe so that when we are tested, we actually function according to how we want to believe. That doesn't mean that we're not going to fail or make mistakes. Of course we will, but hopefully we'll avoid circumstances and consequences of that could really harm us. So why is this important? Well, there's a changing landscape as far as people looking and considering themselves to be Christians. Is that important? Does that matter? Uh, the fact that uh, people are not identifying with any particular religious affiliation, well, it is important because it does affect the workplace. And how does it affect the workplace? Well, one, don't force your views on me. That's one of the elements that our values and what we believe, if we don't really have a firm understanding and where do we get our values and beliefs from, if it isn't something that's necessarily related to a faith tradition in some capacity. Obviously, we're influenced by the people uh, that have raised us, our parents and other individuals that have influence on us. But when it comes to a context in the workplace, we do encounter this element of don't force your views on me. To that, one uh, writer has responded, well, why not? Because you're forcing your views on me if I'm not forcing them on you. So let's take a little bit of a, a look then. Well, if we're at this confrontational element, is there a best way to serve God at the workplace? Well, Tim Keller had, Reverend Keller has identified eight different ways that come from various faith traditions. He doesn't identify what those faith traditions are, which I think is actually a good thing. And so we have a poll located in Sakai that I would like you to take to uh, identify which one you feel best fits you and how you uh, endeavor or would want to endeavor to serve God in the workplace. So take that because it's important to know because that's another element that will filter the things that we encounter in the workplace. And James writes, you can no more show me your works apart from your faith than I can show my faith apart from my works. And so faith and work they fit together like a hand in a glove 
So ways to serve God, these are those eight different ways. And there's a poll located in Sakai. And one size doesn't fit all. So let's look a little bit about some of the readings in chapters 1 through 5. And I just wanted to pull out one of those elements in the Big Five personality framework and how that influences and affects us, us and our ability to have strong, sustainable relationships. And so with that, I look at Scripture and find in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. And then in Philippians, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. It's important to know that how you are wired is unique to you. And so sometimes we may feel, well, I wish I was uh, a little more extroverted or a little more introverted or uh, was a little more conscientious or a little bit more agreeable. Well, those are all things that are actually learned and we can adapt and adjust. However, I may have a natural uh, element. So if I'm a naturally disagreeable person or low on agreeableness, I need to realize how that affects others. And so that I need to modify and maybe not have uh, so much dysfunctional behavior. Maybe I am a little neurotic. Uh, actually, as we're watching Rango, we know neuroticism uh, exists. So let's not uh, fight it. But let's also realize that it's a growing opportunity for us. As Socrates said, more self-awareness, knowing ourselves, uh, will help us, uh, obviously, in our relationships. And so I also like this particular job characteristics theory found uh, in uh, Chapter 5, and it will relate to a, a lecture that I've given in the past on the purpose-driven life, how much is purpose, how much is drive, how much is talent. And when you engage in this, I want you to look at the core dimensions of jobs, what's important to you. Look at those psychological states uh, where we all want to have meaningfulness of work. Are you able to achieve that uh, from the skill variety and tasks that you're uh, working on? And are they significant? Do they make a difference? And so as I relate that to scripture, I'm looking in, uh, to want to have a career I'm passionate about, knowing that if I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, uh, that he and seek after him doors are going to open for me uh, that some that i i don't know how they will open uh, but uh, they they will throughout time uh, as i follow after god and so knowing to him that he's going to do more than i could ever ask or imagine however i could i'm a part of that and so uh, with that i want you to look at the career you're passionate about as it relates to rating the core dimensions of your ideal job calculate your mps your motivation potential score uh, there's a formula uh, listed there and uh, what are the must-haves and what are the good to have and things that are not necessary as it relates to the variety of a job the identity uh, task that you have and the significance of that and then looking at how much autonomy is important to you and feedback you can calculate this out as it relates to a job that you currently have or again the job that you're looking for so a way to uh, for you to uh, process that and make thoughtful decisions uh, that will affect your life going forward so Rango questions for part one uh, you had an opportunity to engage in those and uh, come out with your memorable quotes and I enjoyed uh, every time uh, I experienced this and used this in my classes that again I learned something new from your observations believe it or not uh, there's always something new uh, which is actually fun and you had a lot of different great quotes that you could use and one of those uh, quotes w came out about as a question uh, who am I I could be anybody and I think it's rather ironic that we have a chameleon who says I could be anybody and literally a chameleon takes on uh, the uh, colors uh, around them and so they adjust and uh, they assimilate if you would into a, a situation uh, but as such sometimes their own personal identity uh, can get lost as they blend in uh, and where they comply with maybe uh, sometimes when they wouldn't but I want you to kind of think about this as we go forward, this who am I question. Uh, I came across a reading where uh, Daniel Pink, uh, the author of the book Drive, uh, would put who am I in, in this kind of a term is what's my sentence, what's my story, what do I uh, want my life to be about? And that's really what the question of who am I uh, comes about to be. So pictured here is Mount Rushmore 
on the uh, uh, in uh, South Dakota. I've never seen this personally, uh, but it would be pretty amazing to see. And we have four uh, presidents that are carved out in this uh, national uh, monument. And uh, George Washington, you know, what is what is his sentence? Well, he's one of our, our founding fathers, and then uh, uh, and also uh, the first president. And then you have Thomas Jefferson who's the author, one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence. And then you have uh, Teddy Roosevelt, who uh, was someone who uh, came up with actually uh, part of the uh, systems that we have in terms of conservation. And uh, he had something he called the Square Deal, uh, which was offering to uh, citizens uh, uh, of the United States fairness as it related to uh, food and drug and uh, regulations and other sorts of things. And then we have, of course, Abraham Lincoln, uh, who saved the Union and freed uh, slaves. And so with this, if you look closely on this mountain, you'll see another image there. Oh, that's me. Well, who am I? What's my sentence? How do I arrive? I may not be carved out on Mount Rushmore, but neither will probably most of us uh, get that opportunity. And so I say to you, though, who am I and what's my sentence? So with that, we close out week two as we look at continuing to daily make mention of you. Uh, remember this week will be our discussion viewing part two of Rango. Make sure you take chapter one through five quiz, read chapter six through 11. Please take the poll as it relates to serving God in the workplace. Looking ahead, not peeking uh, too far ahead where we get lost in the, what we need to do now, but gaining insight and planning. Your classic theory paper will be due next week, as well as who are you teaming up on the applied organization diagnosis paper. That proposal is due next week. And then week after, uh, week four, will be your classic theory paper as a result of your, uh, your presentation, rather, as a result of your paper. And then strength finders assessment week five. And then we're finishing week six with your organization diagnosis paper continuing to daily make mention of you that God would have a breakthrough in your life and a positive life-changing experience. So with that, remember the virtual classroom never sleeps. Hopefully you take a little nap from time to time. If you need anything from me, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for making this a fun time.